اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وافضل الصلاة وعتم تسلیم على سیدنا محمد وعالى آله وصحبه اجمعین وردی اللہ تعالی ان ساد جتابین وعلماء الامنین وعمت العربة المجتهدین ومقاردیم الى یوم الدین اما بعد السلام علیکم ورحمة اللہ وبرکاتہ How is everyone? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, share this. We need y'all deep in here. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Abdul Bar Ukt Zakaria Nunu Zahir Melody Mariam Alhamdulillah I'm good Alhamdulillah I was Am Sick But nothing major A cold or something I don't know Feel like it's going away. But, uh, other than that, I'm good. Enjoying Ramadan, trying to soak up all of these blessings and get it in while I can. Alhamdulillah. As I said yesterday, I wanted to do a fundraiser for one of our communities in the Gambia. And I want to also give some beneficial information. As you can see by the title, it says Building a Masjid, the E Prayer, and the Night of Power. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah, I try to my best, if you know me, I try to keep things simple. And I know we're not in the, like, times are changing fast. And when I took Shahada over 30 years ago, the times are a lot different now than it was then. You know, sometimes, you know, I'm always thinking of ways to uh, illustrate what I'm thinking. How many of y'all are old enough to remember that movie, I'm gonna get you sucker? I'm going to get you, sucker. It was one of the, I think, the Wayans movies. You know, they're always making fun of stuff. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Stanley and Kenneth and Akila. There was one point in the movie where, I forgot his name there, but his name was Huggy Bear where he came home from prison and he thought he was dressing fly. He had his hat on, his old pimp suit. He had the shoes on with little fish tanks at the bottom of it. And so he was walking like, you know, yeah, like I'm doing it. Yeah. Like he thought he was really fly. And people are laughing at him like, <laughs> like look at this guy. You know, the little fish bowls at the bottom of his shoes broke. <laughs> I mentioned that to show that sometimes you can be stuck in a time period. Like for, in that example, a lot of people that go to prison, in their mind, the world is as it was when they went into prison. 
And they could have did five, 10, 20, 30 years. And a lot, it takes a, a lot of, it takes a lot of, a lot of them time to adjust because their mind is still stuck in where it was when they went to prison. Well, I don't think it is as extreme, but for a lot of us, we think the Muslim community is how it was when we became Muslim. And it's not. And I'm always telling myself that every day. It's not like it was when you became Muslim. It's different. Back when I became Muslim, there were certain things that all Muslims knew. It didn't matter your extent of practice or not. There were certain things that as a Muslim, you knew. These are not those times. These times, you don't know what a Muslim knows and what he doesn't know. You can't judge that based upon how long he or she has been Muslim. They could have been Muslim 20 years and don't know anything. Or they could have been Muslim one month and know a whole lot. You just can't tell based upon how long they have been Muslim. So with that in mind, I said, you know what? There's a lot of stuff people don't know. And a lot of times, for whatever reason, we don't say, hey, I don't, I don't understand. What, what was that word you just said? What does that mean? I don't know. We don't say those things. We just continue listening or, or participating, a lot of times not knowing what's going on. And I recognize that. So I try to keep things very simple. And I try to I try to explain things that maybe 30 years ago wouldn't have needed to be explained. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa and Khadija. I think I caught everybody. So this is why I want to uh, talk about the Eid prayer, because you know the Eid is coming up, and Eid, you find it spelled this way, it's spelled with an I, if you know Arabic, or you find it spelled this way, same thing. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Eid. So there are two major Eids in Islam. The first one is called Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Fitr. This is like the celebration of fast breaking. This is the Eid or celebration that occurs the next day after Ramadan. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So that's one Eid. The other Eid is Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Adha occurs approximately two and a half months after the end of Ramadan. It happens on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. Dhul Hijjah is the 12th month of Ramadan. It's so if Ramadan, you know, you have Ramadan. You have Shawwal, 
which is the 10th month. And then you have the Qaeda, which is the 11th month. And then you have the Hijjah, which is the 12th month. On the 10th day of that month, that's when Eid al-Adha occurs. Eid al-Adha is like the celebration of sacrifice. So nine times out of 10, when you listen to the Eid khutbah, the Eid sermon, is going to have some connection to the theme of sacrifice because we're commemorating the sacrifice that Prophet Ibrahim was willing to do with regards to his son Ismail. Ismail. Now, these two Eid celebrations, for the most part, as far as the ritual practices, they're the same. There's some differences, but they're the same. Eid al-Fitra is like it's a one-day celebration. Eid al-Adha is like a three-day celebration. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Isa. And Tahira. Eid al-Adha, if you can afford it, you should sacrifice an animal. Eid al-Adha is also called Eid al-Akbar because it's the biggest, the largest of the two Eids. Well, it's supposed to be. In this society, it's not really. But in the, in the Muslim world, that's when you like go all out. In our context in the Western world, most of us are not really conscious of the Islamic calendar unless it's dealing with Ramadan. So here, it seems like, and this is just my observation, I don't know if you will agree with me or not, but uh, I think we treat Eid al-Fitr as the big Eid and Eid al-Adha as the small Eid. That's just my observation. I could be wrong. So the timing of the prayer, timing of the Eid prayer. The time that the Eid prayer, no, before I go there, let me stop, let me back up. The Eid is, takes place on the first of Shawwal, which is the 10th month. How do you know? When it's the first of, first of Shawwal, the same as you do with the other 11 months, you go by the sighting of the moon. So all of the conversation and things that we learn regarding the beginning of Ramadan, this all of these same things apply to the beginning of every month, every other month, including Shawwal. And the first of Shawwal is the Eid. So everything we know about, you know, the month being 29 or 30 days and looking for the new moon and not going with calculations and going by a sighting, preferably a local sighting, and sticking to your community. All those things that we went over in a little bit more detail before Ramadan began, all of those things still apply. It's not just only for Ramadan. So I hope you remember all of that. So now the time for the actual prayer. It's the same time as the duha salat, meaning after fajr or subha goes out, the morning prayer is out, the sun is up. You can do the e prayer anytime. Anytime. until before the whore comes in so the whole morning time you can do the e prayer the whole morning time you could do the e prayer as long as though the sun hasn't reached its, its highest point and it's after fajr meaning you can see the whole entire sun 
anytime between that time. Our community is doing the Eid prayer uh, at 9 a.m. So we're going to begin at 8.30, meaning we do the takbirat. The takbirat is plural for the word takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi ilham, or any formula. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. I think that is the simplest one. Speaking of takbirat, you know in the Maliki school, You know, that's like considered dhikr or remembrance of Allah. So in the Maliki school, we do dhikr together, but not necessarily in unison. What do you mean? The Arabic term that they use is salt and wahid, like one voice. The way most of us do it, the most the way most of us are used to doing it, the Maliki school, we don't do it that way. Everybody's doing it individually. I tried that here, but it's hard. Everybody's used to doing it together. That's part of a bigger principle in the Maliki school. Of, I shouldn't say principle. One of the biggest, one of the part of a bigger uh, issue, masala, in the Maliki school. And of course, like school, and you have differences of opinion. This is one of those areas where we we don't vicar in Jamai. And people usually conflate two issues. When we say dhikr in Jamaat, we mean exactly that dhikrin in one voice. That don't mean we can't come together to do dhikr. No, yes, you can come together to do dhikr. We just don't do it in one voice. The other schools, there's nothing wrong with doing it in one voice, in unison. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Patricia. And the takbirat of the Eid falls under that. But there's nothing to trip over if you Maliki. It's, it's all right. You're not going to become Kafir if you do it in one voice. Calm down. Then you're all right. <laughs> so, the Eid prayer, it, go, it comes with a khutbah as well, a sermon. But you know, like in Juma, you do the sermon first, the khutbah first, and then the prayer. The Eid is the other way. You do the prayer first, and then the khutbah. Now there's something a little different with the prayer. It's two rakats, just like a Juma prayer, but the number of takbirs, when takbir is saying Allahu Akbar. In our school, the Maliki school, when you do the first takbir, right? And keep in mind, when you read books of fiqh, takbir and rafa al yadain are two separate issues. When I say takbir, meaning Allahu Akbar, and the raising of the hands, they're two separate issues. So when I say, when I refer to the takbir, don't automatically assume I'm talking about raising hands. You know, when you raise your hands to your shoulders or your ears. So when I say takbir, don't automatically assume I'm talking about raising hands. So the takbir tul ihram, the opening takbir, is done once plus an additional six, so seven all together.
So there's seven tak bears in the beginning. In the Maliki school, you only raise your hand for the first one. Not for the other six. You don't keep going, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You don't keep doing it. So the prayer is done just like a Jumar prayer. Its re recitation is audible out loud. And then when you're in the ending of your first raka, and then you say to Takbir to come out of prostration and to go back to stand up for the second raka, you do an additional five Takbirs. So that's six all together, if you want to look at it like that. One from coming out of prostration and an additional five. And I know because Muslims, we have like bad adab, bad mannerisms. So you will find in many Eid prayers where people think you don't have to listen to the khutbah. So after the prayer, people be talking, socializing, and they don't, you're not supposed to do this. It's just, it's you treat it like Jum, Jumar. I shouldn't say that because people talk during Jumar now. They don't turn off their phones. Sometimes Jumar sounds like you're in Best Buy. All these electronic devices going off. But Jumar, you're supposed to be not only silent, the companions were described, they, they would sit so still that like birds can land on their head and be comfortable. We are far cry from that. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh suni kareem. So I just want to mention some things connected with the Eid. After at, some things that you should do, I, highly recommend it, right? You should make a ghusl after the morning prayer. But if whatever reason you can't do it after, you could do it before. You should wear some good smell, some smell good. You should wear your nicest clothes. You should be clipping your nails, trimming your mustache, shaving one's armpits and pubic hairs. All of that's called fitra. The same word, like we talk about Eid al-Fitra and Zakat al-Fitra, same root word. If you have the ability to walk to the masjid on foot and saying the takbirs on the way there. And if it's Eid al-Fitra, this Eid that's coming up, that you make sure you eat something before the Eid prayer. Like, you don't want to say, nah, I just eat afterwards. No, just eat something. Drink some water, do something. Just eat something. It doesn't have to be a full course meal, but just eat something. And if it's Eid al-Adha, you don't eat anything until after the Eid prayer and the khutbah. And, like, they talk about eating from your sacrifice. but not everybody sacrifices and you know this is the western world if you're sacrificing usually it's not near the masjid you got to drive out someplace and you know you'll be waiting to maghrib if you talk about eating from the sacrifice so no you eat after the eid prayer wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh rj And going to the Eid by one route and taking another way back home from the Eid. 
just take note of which way you came to the E and then go home another way. And saying the talk bears on the way. I think I got everything. I feel like I just something just crossed my mind. Like I feel like I I'm, I'm missing something. Like I'm supposed to mention something. I mentioned about the kutbah, talking during the kutbah. I mentioned the raising of the hands. Maybe it'll come to me later. Yeah, you should wear your nicest clothes. Don't be like many of us are now. If we go to some non-Muslim gathering, maybe some political event, the Muslims are supporting some political candidate, you'll see some, you'll see the Muslims come out nice clothes. That same Muslim, you see him go to Jumu'ah with a t-shirt on. You see him come to Eid tatted up in his work clothes, right? It shows you what we honor and respect more. These are days, Juma and Eid, that we so these are our holidays. We're supposed to dress up. We'll come, you know, just like not caring, like, you know, I'm here. What else you want from me? I'm here. You should revive the sunnah, bring honor to these days. And trust me, I have kids that are very young and I have kids that are very old. And many of us, we, we cause trauma for our children because they don't have no memories to stick on to, to cling on to. And the kufar, they got all of these memories going, growing up, right? Our children don't have any pleasant memories of the Eid because the adults didn't care about it. And so many of our children growing up, grow up yearning to do what the kufar do, the non-Muslims do, because the Muslims are boring. They don't do anything. They don't even dress up for their own holidays. Matter of fact, well, my dad didn't even go to the Eid. He went to work. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Fatima and Ratik. So don't do that to your children. And so let me uh, show you all something. So we're still talking about the E prayer. If you've got any comments or questions, type that in while I t tell you a little bit about this masjid that uh, I need your help raising money for. Alhamdulillah. Let me put this up here. Alhamdulillah. Slideshow. Now I'm going to show you some pictures of the masjid in Gambia, the community. This is their masjid where they're praying right now. It this masjid wasn't built properly. So, you know, when it rains outside, it rains inside. And you can't think of over there, like they don't have four seasons in Gambia like they have four seasons in America. Like here, you know, you have winter, summer, spring, fall, and it may rain a little or a lot in any of those seasons here. But over there, they have a special season called the rainy season. And it seems like it's getting earlier and earlier every year. It starts in, in like June. And I think it ends in like October. September. And when it rains, it rains. It rains, rains. The rain be raining, literally. And when that happens, subhanAllah, half of that masjid, you can't pray in it. Go to the next side. 
That's a picture of the dome of that masjid. That's the picture of the dome of that masjid. If you all are typing questions, I'm saving them, so I'm going to get back to them after I finish uh, talking about this masjid. So you see all them cracks in there, right? All oh, that's water coming inside. Yeah, Abdul Bar, same master, same exact master. So Abdul Bar said, "Is that the master they were working on two years ago when we were there, Imam?" Yes, same exact master, same master. They run out of money. That's why they need our help. I told them last time I was there in January that I would help them. Well, I, you know, I helped them anyway. I came to you all for help for them more than once uh but uh uh and then i told him again i said well, we try to do something big during ramadan so i'm trying to keep my word and they're like family over there now but anyway again this is a the same masjid, looking at the ceiling, that's closer to the front, like where the prayer niche in the membar is, but with an angle to the ceiling. And you can see there are cracks all in the ceiling. ceiling. So when it rains inside, you rain. And when it rains outside, it rains inside. This is the prayer area. This is me standing in the front of the masjid with my camera facing towards the back. So if you look to the back left of that masjid, you see where the ceiling is just gone. You see that brown area. And you see all those water stains and all that stuff. And this is where they are still praying. This is me taking a picture of the front. You can even look at the wall close to the floor on the right side in the corner. You see all those water stains. When it rains, they have to pull up all those rugs. This is a picture of the masjid from the outside. That little area in the back, that's where the sisters pray. Look at that. Now, these are some pictures of the new masjid. I took this picture, as you see, in 2021. This is the one they're working on. That's directly across the street. It looks like it's about to cave in. Exactly. I'm looking for something real quick. Oh.
Shukran, Maryam. May Allah reward you. She said, Imam, you have my support when you put up the first slide. Alhamdulillah. Please put up, please put the link up where we need to send the money. The links are all the same links you usually use to donate to Masjid Bookman. The only thing I'm asking you to do is just put Gambia Masjid there. So we know to put that money off to the side. And then I'll personally take that money and I will send it to uh send it to them, inshallah. So this is 2021, the new masjid that they're building. Uh-oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, that was a video I tried to put in here. Oh, we don't need that. All right. This is pictures I took this year in January. So you see they made progress, but not nearly as much progress as they should have. They just run out of money. So you see the dome is completed. Let me see if I can put that picture up where they, hold on for a minute. See if I can do this right here real quick. Okay, I did it. Okay. Let me show you all this real quick. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the work in progress at the Arabia Central Mosque. And they are now working on the dorm. And they've already fixed everything in there. Any moment from now, they will fix the roads and everything in there. Start the conclusion of the drum as well. So the carpenters are working and working the whole day around to get everything fixed. So it's almost going towards the end of the drum as well. So another stage is to go in progress. So, Imam, this is to show your family and all the brothers and sisters of Islam out there to inform them that the work has already been been in progress. This is the face of the drum. So that was when they were uh, building, when they first started building the dome. Hold on, let me go back here. Okay. So now that dome was completed, as you can see here. This is 2024, this year. Another view from the outside. The brother on the right, to my left in the picture, that's the Imam of the Masjid. Of course, that's me in the middle and another one of the elders and noblemen of that community. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Abdullah. So I took a little video walking around so y'all can see what it's like inside. The video seems to be jumping. I don't know why.
got goats walking in the mastery. This is the time for us like to really get some nice blessings. Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man bana masjidan lillahi, bana allahu lahu fil jannati mithlahu. Whoever builds a masjid for Allah, Allah will build for him the like of it in paradise. So we all have the opportunity. In this hadith is recorded by Muslim and Bukhari, Bukhari and Muslim. So, you know, this is an opportunity. It's the month of Ramadan. It's the last 10 days. We're about to talk about that too, inshallah. It's the last 10 days. Look for the night of power, you know, no, no, we, you know, subhanAllah. We're in a position to cash in on some big blessings. Some of you ask questions. I put this, I, I, I noted them and put it aside. I'm going to get to y'all, inshallah. Now I want to show y'all something real cute. This is the Quran school right next to the master. So I came there with my phone out and they start singing. Right. I didn't I didn't uh, I forgot to get somebody to translate it for me to see what they were saying, but uh Alhamdulillah, they seem real happy that I was there. I got to ask my son what they were saying. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah. So, I'm asking you to help me help them, you know. Like, for y'all don't know, like Abdu Bar, he was there with us before, right? This is the place where Kuta Kente was taken from. There are two small villages there, Jufare and Albreda, right? That's where he was he was taken from. When we come there, we like family, you know, and you know, they look out for us. And whenever I come there with somebody and uh ask, you know, for them to get the tour, right? They get the special tour. They don't get the cookie cutter, you know, other people tour. They get the real tour, inshallah. So, you know, alhamdulillah. When I come there, they don't be having a handout or whatever like this, whatever. But I took it upon myself that, you know, I, I don't want to see that master finally cave in and they not have no no master to pray in, you know? Alhamdulillah. So if you find it in your heart, please donate.
I was, I, wa I wanted to send them 3,000. That's not enough to fix the place, but I wanted to send them at least about 3,000. So I will keep you all updated as money comes in. I know a lot of times we do these things, people don't have money right now while we're doing the live, <coughs> but they may come later. So I want them to send them, I want to send the money to them while we're still in Ramadan. So it all depends on how fast the money comes and all of that. Hold on for a minute. We have a solar eclipse that is possibly coming on the 8th of this month. How do we account for the sighting of the moon? It has nothing to do with sighting the moon. Because it's Ru'yat al-Hilal. It's the sighting of the new crescent moon. So this is two different uh, things. Alhamdulillah. I think I answered that. With all this debate about the start of Ramadan, what do you do if the masjid you follow is celebrating the tenth? But we're not sure the we're not sure about the moon for Shawal until the ninth. Every I think every case, every situation is on a case by case basis. <sighs> Wow, I don't know. I would need more details. Is there other masjids in the city? You know, that's why it's important that the work that we are all doing, going out to sight the moon and making that more popular, because we need to create options for ourselves. <clears throat> Once we do this and, it be, and the sunnah becomes more normalized, there are going to be some communities there that's going to follow that sunnah. And then you have options. So for your specific situation, I don't know. I've done something before. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you all do it. One particular time, I was so hardcore with this. I just did the eat with me and my family in the park. And I was living in the city with a lot of Muslims. The, the Muslims that were following sightings, they was following sightings from halfway around the planet. The rest of them was doing calculations and the other ones was following Saudi and they all went on the same day. And I was like, I ain't doing that. It's just me and my family had Eid together in the park. Literally, I gave the khutbah, right? Led this a lot. And we had a picnic in the park, just me and my family, no one else. I don't recommend you do that. without knowing all the details about your city and all that kind of stuff, this is what I would say. I would say, still go sight the moon, keep your calendar. And if they go a day before your local calendar, maybe make your intentions. Maybe there'll be a sighting someplace else on the planet. At least it'll be a sighting. Make your intentions to uh, do it with, go with that sighting. Just even saying it makes me cringe. But anyway, at least you'll be following the sun in some aspect because you're following a sighting. Allah knows best.
Do you have dual citizenship? It's a little bit more layered than that. So I say yes and no. A lot of these African countries, it ain't just dual citizenship or not. It is a little bit more complex than that. Like you can have residency and not citizenship and all that is, is, is there. Inshallah, we're looking for the travel with your tour in 2025. Inshallah. Yeah, it's gonna be nice, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. I'm assuming Abdubar is asking me about donating to this masjid. I didn't have a deadline. Let's put a deadline on it. Uh let's see. I just told them that I would raise funds for them during Ramadan. So let me see. For us, the E could be Wednesday the 10th or Thursday the 11th. So let's make it, because I don't want to be dealing with that the day before the E. So let's make the deadline April 8th, Monday, April 8th. So the deadline for this fundraiser for the Master in Gambia is April 8th. Let me put that in the comments. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Abdul Rahim. That's what happened to Minara community at the start of Ramadan. We started after we sighted the moon. Okay, alhamdulillah. I've been t doing tarawi with you at home. Is this permissible? It depends on what you mean by doing tarawi, meaning literally following us in the prayer. Uh, I never heard of that being permissible. When you mentioned that before, I thought you were like just listening to the recitation. There's benefit, alhamdulillah, listening to the Quran being recited. Ahla Sunnati wa Jamaah is only performing three times a week. I know Ahla Sunnah got to get their weight up, man. Oh, you actually perform? <laughs> I'll do bar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah reward you for your intentions. You know, like that character from that movie. See, this is why we do what we do, man. This is why we do what we do. Because a lot of us, Ahlu Sunnah, we get online and complain about what's not there. But in our city, right, in our cities, we're not doing anything about the problem. We just come online and complain about what's not there. This is why we do Tarawi every night. This is why we have iftar every night. You know, people be complaining about, you know, you know, you know, a lot of African Americans come into Islam thinking that, you know, Pakistani food is Islamic food or Mediterranean food, kebabs and all that stuff. That's Islamic food, right? And they like actually shocked, like, no, nah, it's Ramadan. I, I don't want to eat no cornbread. Nah, man, we had cornbread at the masjid yesterday. Cornbread. That's right. Cornbread. 
made by Samira, banging too, and macaroni and cheese. And it's just as halal as the kebabs and the biryani and all that stuff. This is why, even though it's permissible to pray any number of rakats for Tarawih, we keep the standard. We do 20 rakats. Tarawih. See, this is why we do what we do. Because too many of you are living in situations like Abdul Bar is. He's trying to go and practice his, his Islam according to the Sunnah, and Ahlul Sunnah is only doing it sometimes. And a lot of us, we ain't making Tarawih at home. A lot of times people get all technical and be like, well, it's actually better if you do it at home because, you know, after the Prophet Sallallahu did it for those two, three days, he did it at home, so it's better to do it at home. You know, half of us, when, when we go home, we ain't making no Tarawih. We turn it on the TV or we're going to sleep, right? So we need the master to be open for Tata Wee. A lot of people be talking that stuff. Oh, you, you know, yeah, it's better and all that kind of stuff, right? Always trying to gut out and undermine the communal aspect of Islam. Trying to be technical, trying to show you know something. You studied somewhere. Okay, you studied someplace. I'm doing that. Show us your certificate. Make it your thumbnail or whatever. Alhamdulillah. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. May Allah reward you. You studied somewhere. You know something. Okay? Allahu Akbar. Now, can we can we pray this Tarawi now? You know, you got them type of people that always, you know, have to show they know something. So, you know, you talk about praying Tarawi in the master. They talk about praying Tarawi at home. You're talking about, you know, we're doing it 20 rakats. Well, you know, the Maliki school, you know, in Medina during the time of Salaf, they did 36 rakats. And you don't have to do 20 rakats. You can do eight. You can do 10. Shut up. All right. We know you know something, man. Calm down. Can everybody give this brother a round of applause? He knows something. Take a bow, brother. Alhamdulillah. Good. Now, back to business. That's what some of these brothers need. They need acknowledgement that they know something. They know a detail that none of us knew. And meanwhile, while they're splitting hairs and saying this and that and the other third, people ain't praying it at all. At home, in the house, 8, 20, 36, 10, nothing. So another thing that I wanted to bring up was the night of power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that it's a blessed night and it's better than a thousand months. It's better than a thousand months. What does this mean? This means that any action undertaken during it is better than that same action done at any other time, a thousand months. Now, one thing you have to understand, there are various opinions about when the night of power is. There's not just one opinion, there's several opinions. One opinion is that it is hidden in the entire year and in Ramadan. And in the middle of 10 days, the middle of 10 days of it, and in the last 10 days. So there's an Islamic scholarly opinion that doesn't res restrict the night of power 
to being inside of the month of Ramadan. You have to know that. And then there's a well-known opinion that most of us know that it's in the odd night, one of the odd nights of the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th. And then there's another opinion that the night of power, it moves. It's not the same all the time. And all of these different opinions I just gave you, there's other little sub opinions that are based upon those opinions. You know what lesson I take from all of that? Don't put your eggs in one basket. At least during the month of Ramadan, try to go hard all month. You just waiting for the master to do the extra long tarawi and tiamu layal on the 27th night. It might not even be the night of power. So go hard as much as you can the entire month of Ramadan. But as we said, the most well-known opinion, odd nights in the last 10 days, and we're in that. So it's not only prayers that we could and should be doing during these last nights of Ramadan. We could and we should be doing all types of acts of obedience during this time. Nighttime is not the time to sleep, not during these last 10 nights. Give your charity during that time. Help someone if you can during that time. Pray Tarawi during that time. Pray more than Tarawi during that time. Whatever you can do, whatever is in your ability to do, now is the time to do it. Now is not the time to sleep long and all that kind of sleep. Now is the time that you sleep only when it's necessary. Your body is crashing. Then you sleep. Then you sleep. I'm looking for another hadith. I just wanted to really read this other hadith. This one is narrated by Jabber, and it's in Ibn Majah, where the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever builds a, a masjid, lillah, for the sake of Allah. And he said, like a sparrow's nest for Allah, like, uh, like a bird nest, like even if it's that small. He said, or even smaller, Al Askara, or even smaller. Then Allahu Lahu Baytan fil Jannah. Allah will build for him a house in paradise. I wanted to read that hadith. Why? Because you may not have a whole lot of money. Like you said, we're trying to raise 3,000 plus for this masjid in Gambia. They've been doing this for a long time. You know how far $3,000 would take them? SubhanAllah. They may finish the whole exterior, maybe even, maybe even able to pray inside, maybe. That's just my guess. I don't know. Don't take my word for it. I don't know the cost of materials out there and all that kind of stuff. But I know it'll push them a long way from where they're at now. It's not like here where 
you might go into Home Depot with a thousand with, with three thousand dollars. Depending on what you buy, you might still have room in your shopping cart. <laughs> Abdul Bar said, "What's the best ritual to practice to perform salat, dhikr, reading Quran, or just a combination of all to catch the night of power and the odd nights? Do whatever keeps you going. Do whatever keeps you going. Do all of it. Let me see. Let me see if Abdul Bar's math is right." No, that's more than that. Maybe you multiplying it times 50. You got to multiply it by at least 64. I'll do bar. So that's 192,000 or more. Yeah, do it all. Sometimes on the ground, you can get 70 for $1, depending on where you go. So our money goes a long way out there. $3,000 may be that push that they need. And plus, those people will give you the clothes off of their backs, and they don't have anything. Those of you who've been there, been there with me before, you already know how how generous and hospitable they are. So, I'll post the links again. These are all Masjid Mukmin links. Just please put in the note Gambia Masjid, so we know to push that money to the side. And then I'll collect it all and I'll send it to them myself for my personal account. And you know how they do. If you remember a couple of years ago, when we raised money for them on here, they're so grateful and they're, they're so transparent that they take pictures of the receipt, make a video showing the money. That they got it, how much, how much it, how much what it was, and you know the brother whose who name I send the money in, they show him giving the money to the imams and the elders, and they're, they're real transparent. And you know I always come and sh sh share those videos. Matter of fact, hold on. Do I still have it? No. There's videos on here somewhere. Anyway. Alhamdulillah. Does anyone have any questions regarding what we spoke about as far as the Eid prayer and the night of power? Once again, our goal is $3,000. Maybe I'll come in the comments of this video and give you all updates.
I'm just waiting to see if there's any more questions. Okay, I'm doing that. I pray this was beneficial for you all. And I really appreciate you all support in helping me help them for this noble cause, which is really helping yourself. It's just you just investing for your hereafter. I think about the hereafter all the time, and I hope you do as well. So we need to prepare for it. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all. Have a good iftar, the remainder of Ramadan, and have a blessed Eid. I'll be coming on again, uh, inshallah. My intention is to come on tomorrow. Uh, I think I know what I want to discuss, but I'm not sure yet. That's why I'm not mentioning it. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha ila antu wa astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk wa la asr. Inna al-insana la fi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tuwasaw bin haqqi wa tuwasaw bin sabr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.